Design and Architecture. The application design, OpenSIPS is multi-processing, it's not multi-threading. So you have to specify the number of processes in the beginning of the script. It's very, very efficient, but it's multi-processing. There are two main logical components, the core and the modules. The core is responsible for the transport layer, for the memory system, the synchronization mechanisms, the SIP parser, the management interface, the database interface, configuration file and script variables, and the main memory cache interface. It's a, it's a simple design, but very efficient. So this is the OpenSIPS internal design. So you have the core, and the core parses the routing script. So your OpenSIPS CFG is parsed on the core, right? There's a SIP parser too that parses the SIP messages, the DB interface to connect to database servers, the memory and lock manager, memory allocation and deallocation, the transport layer, TCP, TLS, and SCTP, and the management interface, the communication with external applications is also made on the core. And, and then you have the module interfaces. Module interfaces extend the, the features of OpenSIPS with location modules, the transaction module. So for a stateful proxy, you need to rely on a module called the transaction module. There are routing modules like dynamic routing, where you can choose the best gateway to complete your call based on some criteria. Instant messaging and presence modules are also modules. Authentication, authorization, and accounting. There's also those AA modules. And miscellaneous modules. There are more than 100 modules to extend the core. So in the core, we have some core functionality like routing script parser, SIP parser, memory manager, uh, transport layer, management interface, and DB interface. And then with modules, you can extend the features of the OpenSIP server. Configuration file. There are three parts in the configuration file, the global parameters, the module parameters, and the routing blocks. Uh, it's a C-shell-like language. There's modularity via function style blocks, conditional statements, there's regular expression support, script variables. Important, you cannot reload the CFG file during runtime. It's very hard to, to talk about the configuration file on a slide. So interrupt the, the, the slides here and let me show you the, the, an actual configuration file. So this is the actual configuration file in the directory slash etc slash OpenSIPS. Let's go to open this, oh, sorry. Let's open this file. So this is the OpenSIPS CFG file. And the first part of the file, as we said, there are the global parameters. These are the parameter, parameters for the whole script, like the log level, the net level of log, the log facility, the number of child, children processes, like four in, in our case. And listen, which ports we, we are going to bind. We are binding only to the to the, how can I say, to the loopback interface, we have to change this, MPATH, and here we have the module section, which modules we are loading, and which module parameters we are loading. So here we have the, the modules and their respective module parameters. And then here the main, uh, the routing logic. What is this routing logic? This is a program that runs on each children that process each SIP message, either a request or a reply. So whenever you receive a message, it will start running this script from the beginning to the end. So here, in this case, it's checking the max forward header. Uh, if, it's, if you have a loop, it will send a reply too many hops. Then if it has two tag, this is for sequential requests. Uh, if it's cancel, it will process cancel. If it's a retransmission, it will absorb retransmissions. If the method is register, we will handle as a register. Uh, if the register message, we use rec record route and send ahead. If it's not register a message. If the invite, we are doing accounting. So it's a, it's a script. This script will run for each request or reply in the system. So this is the configuration file 
in its respective sessions, just to have an overview of what is the configuration file. This is the only configuration file you're going to edit to configure OpenSIPs. Back to our presentation. The SIP parser. SIP parser is an important component. OpenSIPs implements a lazy parser, so the parsing is done on demand. It's a lot more efficient. So OpenSIPs just parse the first header, first headers, and later the header content. It, when you try to access some parts of the message, it parses the, the message uh, that you really need to, to process. So it's much, much faster in this way. If you're checking the body of the message, you have to read the whole message. But if you're just routing based on a request, you really don't need to read the, the whole message. Just send it ahead, right? When it comes to applying changes on the SIP message, note the script we'll see that all the time is the original received message. You will not be able to see your changes, like seeing a new header after inserting it. Only after all the process, when you send a new T relay to relay the, the request ahead, the headers are actually inserted in the message. Most of the elements from the SIP message can be assessed uh, from the script via script pseudo variables. Pseudo variables are something like dollar uh, $tu is the to URI, dollar $ru is the request URI. So you have access to any component of the SIP message on open SIPs. The via header, all the headers, all the parts of the header. It's very easy to, to create a logic based on any small piece of information from the SIP message. Transport layer. We have uh, four transports. UDP. Uh, it's, UDP is the, the standard. It's very fast, it's high, it's high performance, and has a fair net traversal support. I believe 99% of what we have today is UDP, is SIP over UDP. TCP is more demanding when dealing with big SIP messages, but it's important for instant message and presence. People that run PBXs are usually running over TCP to support instant, instant messaging and also presence. TLS is required for insecure environments. Uh, it's encryption over TCP, so TLS is based on TCP, adds a substantial overhead. And WebSocket, and WebSocket Secure is used for web applications for WebRTC. You can use SIP signaling for WebRTC over a WebSocket interface. Module design. A module is a dynamic library. What's important here? You have a module is identified by name, when you create a module, it will export a set of components to be used from other modules. So you export script parameters, script functions, statistics variable, uh, MI commons, and script pseudo variables. Let me show you one module, and I think you will, you will understand this. Let me interrupt again. The, the... So let me show you a module, a very simple one. I will use here the module speed dial. It's a very simple module easy to explain. In SpeedDio, you start the module and you start defining what are the exported functions. So we'll have a exported function called the SD lookup with one or two parameters. We will have this module parameters, the URL, user column, domain column, SD user column, SD domain column. These are the module parameters exported. Then we have module dependencies, interfaces. So you can export functions, asynchronous functions, parameters, statistics, MI functions, pseudo variables, uh, extra process. So whenever you define a module, you create new commons, new pseudo variables, new uh, MI functions, new statistics for OpenSIP. You extend the features and the way OpenSIPS works using modules. So this is the architecture of the module. It exports functions, parameters, statistics, MI commons, and so on. When you go to the documentation, let me open a browser here in uh, OpenSIPS modules. Um, let me use the 2.4 here. And we go to, to 2.4. You go here. Here, this are all the modules. And when you open a module such as Speed Dial, let me see if I can. Speed Dial actually is one of the. Okay, I apply modules. This is the Speed Dial. 
So these are the exported parameters, these are the exported functions, right, that you have seen in the module itself. There are other modules, such as the dial plan, that support, exports a lot more parameters uh, functions. Might be due to a complicated one, the TM module, that it's a, a huge module, TM transaction module. Transaction exports parameters, exports lots of functions, pseudo variables, MI functions, and statistics. It exports almost everything you can export from a module. If you don't load the TM, you will not have these functions on the script, and you receive a message called missing load module. So you're not going to have T relay, you're not going to have T on reply. All these functions are only available when you load a module. Let's move back to our presentation. So this is the module design. Management interface. Management interface is the communication between external programs and the and open SIPs. You can do it over a FIFO file, over XML RPC or JSON uh, RPC, and over data datagram. Depends on what you are what you are calling. Uh, you can trigger comments with data uh, and you can use OpenSIP CTL and OSIPS cons OSIP console to communicate with OpenSIP. So again, let me show you a practical example. It will be much easier to understand. So here we are using the OMI interface, OpenSIP CTL FIFO, because we are using FIFO. And I will use the command which. These are the comments that are now available on, on our script to run, like uh, I can use OpenSubCTL FIFO version to show the version. I can use OpenCTL uptime to see the uptime. I can show the processes running on the system. I can show the user location dump, the users registered, no users registered this time. So this is the EMI interface. You send comments to the server. And actually when you're sending comments, you're sending comments to this file here, the OpenSIPS FIFO, this one here, right? When you write to this file, you are sending a comment to OpenSIPS. This is the FIFO interface, but I can run different interface. I can run a JSON interface, and then you can send these comments over JSON to control the OpenSIPS. You can reload modules. You can do lots of stuff using the EMI interface. Let's move back here. Database interface. It's an abstraction interface. You can access uh, many different uh, databases, SQL and NoSQL. So it creates an abstraction for insert, upgrade, delete, and select, but also allows you to send raw comments to the, to the database. There are, there are drivers for MySQL, Postgres. MySQL and Postgres are by far the most popular, but if you want to use Oracle, if you want to use Microsoft SQL, Unix, ODBC, DB2, whatever, you can use. There's also the possibility to use uh, Mongo and other, uh, other NoSQL databases. OpenSIPS deployment prototype. So usually OpenSIPS is, de is deployed in this way. You have OpenSIPS, a provisioning system, such as the OpenSIPS control panel to add users. Uh, it runs a database for authentication and accounting, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So OpenSIPS will use the authentication module, the group module, uh, the permissions module to authorize calls. MI interface to other applications, usually OpenSIPS control panel will use the MI to send comments to OpenSIPS. Uh, sometimes present server and messaging server will be a separate server, a media server, another separate server for all use, like oh, I wanna play a message, you need a media server. The storage system, a monitoring server to monitor the system and connections to PSN gateways, GSM gateways and so on. Summary, and the sequence of three videos you have learned. Go big with OpenSIPs. Use OpenSIPs when you want thousands of uh, call attempts per second and hundreds of thousands of, ex of extensions. Markets, the main market for OpenSIPs are still internet telephony service providers. 
The second market is load balancing scale for asterisk, free switch, call servers, VoIP servers. There are huge companies. Some of the biggest companies, VoIP companies in the world, use OpenSIPs to load balance uh, the VoIP infrastructure. Security, OpenSIPs is a great platform for session border controllers. In terms of architecture, OpenSIPS is multi-process and modular. It's very small, but you can add new features very easily through modules. New functions, new module parameters, new statistics, new MI comments. Thank you for watching this video.